Yo, this is going to be a super, super in-depth and overdone explanation of the world record. If you don't know much about Minecraft speedrunning, you're in the perfect place to learn about why and how every little thing is being done. First off, there's 15 games open. Let's start from the very top to understand why this is happening. To finish the speedrun, we kill the dragon. To kill the dragon, the meta is to use beds, and to get to the dragon we need ender pearls and blaze rods. We can get both of these from the nether, so we need to go there. Do all of these quickly and you'll get the world record. So why 15 games? To get to the nether we need to place 10 obsidian. The fastest way to do this is with lava buckets against water. But where do we get 10 lava buckets? Lava pools are rare, but magma ravines with lava under them are common. So let's try and get a magma ravine as fast as possible. But we also need a bucket made of iron. The fastest way to get iron in an ocean is from a shipwreck or a buried treasure. Shipwrecks are usually pretty far away, but how could you get a buried treasure without a map that leads to one? Introducing Mapless. The debug pie chart, opened with Shift and F3, can tell us when nearby blocks are creating lag. If we memorize the exact amount of lag a single buried treasure chest creates, then we could try and find that exact amount of lag in a random seed. But buried treasures are super rare, a 1 in 100 chance of generating per beach chunk, so there's no way we're ever going to find one. How about opening 15 games and making tens of thousands of new worlds on them every day to check every single beach in the infinite multiverse? Now it doesn't matter how rare they are, because we can throw the metaphorical 1 in 100 dice thousands of times a minute. The orange section of the pie chart is the amount of lag being generated by block entities such as chests. You can't see any lag over here, but over here there's some lag. The lag started when he loaded this section of the world on the left side of the screen. So if we spin the other way, and see where the lag is created on the right side of his screen, we might be able to draw some lines in our head and pinpoint which chunk of the world is generating the lag equivalent to a single treasure chest. And you can see the render distance setting is low so that we don't load in any other chests further away from the island that we spawned on. In the chunk that he pinpointed, there's some suspicious blocks sticking out. This indicates that a buried treasure is buried under here. When breaking the gravel, he also had the 1 in 10 chance of getting flint. Inside the buried treasure, we have the iron we needed, some extra gold, TNT, and a lot of spare food. The loading method he's using is complicated. When you double shift click on an item stack, it gets all of that specific item out of the chest. You can trick the game into triggering this mechanic by moving the item out of the slot and then back into the slot. So he presses 6 to move the iron out of the slot, he shift clicks the empty slot, presses 6 again to bring it back to the slot, then shift clicks again. Since he shift clicked twice in the same slot, even though the item moved and came back, it triggers all of that iron to be looted out of the chest. He does this on every item he needs in chests. Like any good Minecraft playthrough, we need wood for some tools and basic items. Let's use the TNT we got so we can break 8 logs in 4 seconds and get some spare dirt in the process. The dirt will be used everywhere throughout the rest of the run as a building block. Crafting full iron tools in a bucket in less than 40 seconds of creating the world, let's go to the nether. Did you notice these kelp items earlier? They should be growing on the sea floor, but instead they broke and floated to the surface. This usually happens when a ravine generated at the sea floor, which displaces the gravel that the kelp grows on. Magma ravines are what we discussed earlier to get lava and to go to the nether. Swimming down, there is lava under this obsidian and magma. But if we were to access it, it would instantly be destroyed by the seawater. So we need to make secure access to the lava. Doors create transparent spaces that block off liquids, so by standing inside of a door we can access lava and block off water. Let's place this block above the lava and start placing some obsidian. A normal portal with 3 obsidian on the sides and 2 obsidian at the top and bottom is made in a quick build. I skipped over earlier how we're getting pearls and rods from the nether to get to the dragon. Blaze rods can be found at a fortress, but pearls are usually dropped from endermen found in the overworld. Now you'll know why speedrunners play on specifically version 116. Introduced in 116 was piglins, who can trade a variety of items that we need. 
Surely it's a coincidence that the items that we've used in speedruns for the past 12 years are now all conveniently traded to the player from a single source. Yes, I'm a huge conspiracy theorist that 1.16.1 was a specially made, handcrafted version of the game directed specifically to speedrunners. Anyway, the items we want from Piglins are Enderpearls, String, and Obsidian. The bastions that Piglins spawn in also coincidentally have a perfect amount of gold and chests in them to get nearly a 97% chance of having every item you need to speedrun with. But that's gotta be a coincidence. Anyway, moving on, let's actually find this bastion thing. Like I said, bastions spawn with piglins, and actually quite a lot of them, roughly 40. Looking at F3, if 40 or more mobs suspiciously spawn at the same time, there's a good chance it's a bastion. Once we see 40 mobs spawn in, we can look at the other entity counter. That only shows mobs in our field of view for some reason. So we lower our FOV setting to pinpoint on what angle the 40 or more mobs are. He found the angle that the entities are on, and lo and behold, there's a bastion over there. What he also saw was a fortress leg on the left, which he needs for the rods. So we have the components in the nether that we need to finish the speedrun. There's four different types of bastions, all with completely different layouts, gold spots, and chest positions. He notes that he got confused on the type it is from a distance, but then starts one of his heavily optimized and practiced routes starting with sailing a boat down to the bottom of the bastion. Fall damage doesn't work properly in boats, so he takes no damage. What he needs to do is assemble a large group of piglins so that they can all trade a bulk load of gold at the same time. Piglins will aggro on you as long as you don't have armor and they have line of sight, but he breaks the chest to aggro any nearby piglins that don't have line of sight. He digs down to the specific gold spots in this bastion type and makes a hole for the piglins to accumulate in so that they can't attack him or wander away from the gold that he throws them. The pigs take 6 seconds to trade per gold. So while he's waiting on his dozen or so pigs to trade over 80 gold, he loots a nearby chest, and finds a ridiculous 11 obsidian in the chest. He returns to the pigs who have already finished trading, and now has the pearls needed to enter the end portal. String to make wool, to make beds to kill the dragon, and some other items that we'll get to later. Now is the time to travel to the fortress that he saw earlier. Throwing pearls is considerably faster than running, but costs health, which is healed by the food he got from the buried treasure. With a stone axe or above, most mobs die to a critical hit and a normal hit. It is slightly faster to kill mobs with an iron sword, but the knockback caused by hitting a mob three times with a sword often results in time loss. So he's at a blaze spawner, he got fire resistance potions from the piglins, so now he can't take fireable damage. Blazers drop rods 50% of the time, and he needs around 6 rods to enter the end. Spawners always spawn 4 blazers, but usually you only get to see 1 or 2 of them per spawn. The reason you don't always get 4 blazers is that the blocks surrounding the spawner cancel the spawns. So he breaks the majority of the blocks around the spawner with TNT that he had earlier also protecting the spawner itself from the explosion. So now the spawner should almost always spawn 4 blazers, resulting in less time waiting for spawns. He lost a couple of blazers before he could build a floor, which costs a rod. Since there's still several blocks remaining around the spawner, two spawns are cancelled and only two blazers spawn. Now he's built a new portal from the obsidian he had from the bastion and piglins. His final goal is to reach a stronghold, which contains the end portal he needs to meet the dragon. Strongholds generate far from the player's spawn point, so he's built a portal far away from his spawn. The way nether travel works is that one block in the nether is equivalent to 8 blocks travelled in the overworld. Since we're speedrunning, any method to travel 8 times faster is probably worth abusing. The chance of being anywhere near a stronghold is rare though, and this run is no different. The stronghold is 1111 blocks away. But how does he know this so surely? What is the pop-up on his screen? And how is this such a good run if the stronghold is so far away? When throwing an Eye of Ender made from one blaze powder and one pearl, it points to the chunk of the nearest stronghold. When you press F3 and C, your player's positional data is copied to the clipboard, including your coordinates, dimension, and faced angle, accurate to two decimal points. This data can then be fed into an external program, NinjaBrainBot. 
This news, of course, enrages the thousands of people who believe speedrunning is about beating the game in its original state with no external tools. What I didn't tell you earlier is that 99% of Minecraft speedrunners use over 15 mods that aim to not change the game's logic in any noticeable way, but provide performance boosts, since Minecraft is a poorly optimized game, and resetting advantages, such as being able to see the world while it's generating, rather than watching a dirt screen. While these tools and mods being legal are subject to constant political debate, this run is conducted using tools and mods that are considered legal to speedrun with as decided by the self-elected moderators of the speedrun.com Minecraft section. The external program NinjaBrain bot takes her positional data and, using incredibly complex algorithms and statistics, provides predictions on where the nearest stronghold's location is. In this run, the inputs provide some fairly low certainty predictions. However, the second eye throw measurement garnered a 100% certainty of the stronghold being at exactly x1620, Z-492. Now all he has to do is travel the 1111 blocks and he'll be exactly at the stronghold. However, this would take around 4 minutes to run there normally, so he goes back to the nether. Going through the portal, he keeps looking at the angle that the eye pointed and throws a pearl in that direction in the nether. An average pearl travels around 60 blocks, but of course this pearl thrown in the nether, relative to the overworld, is effectively travelling around 500 blocks towards the stronghold. He then lowers his render distance, which unloads the pearl, so that he can load it later to teleport at whim. The reason this is a time save is that the time that the pearl spent flying through the air was overlapped while waiting for the spawner to spawn blazes. He needed a couple more rods to have the minimum amount of eyes to fill the portal, so kills a few more blazes. Now he loads the pearl again and teleports. One more good pearl in the direction of the stronghold, and now he's only 10 blocks away from the stronghold in a matter of seconds. Building the portal at the exact coordinates in the nether that relate to the stronghold coordinates in the overworld put him perfectly in the stronghold. Again, he's using the pie chart, just like at the start of the run to find buried treasure. Except this time, he sets his settings to very specific workshopped and researched values to find the portal room, which contains a silverfish spawner. He wants to find the exact lag values of the silverfish spawner so that he can go directly to the portal room instead of running aimlessly around the stronghold, which he quickly finds the angle of. After a small nav error, he finds the correct path and enters the portal room. Standing in the middle of the lava like this lets him be safe from most mobs, as mobs don't pathfind to blocks that are adjacent to lava. Now he's entered end. The dragon has a very elaborate set of mechanics, but it can be broken down fairly simply. In order to get within range of the dragon to damage it, it needs to perch. It has a 1 in 13 chance to perch each time it finishes a path. It can also fireball you, which delays paths and therefore delays perching. The closer you are to the fountain in the middle of the end, the more likely the dragon is to fireball you. Therefore, the only good way to increase perch odds is to decrease fireball odds. There are dozens of other ways to kill the dragon quickly or influence perch odds, but they're out of the scope of this video. He sets up an obsidian against the fountain, which is an explosion proof block. He then crafted beds, which explode when not used in the overworld, and backs away from the fountain to avoid fireballs. Once he notices specific dragon movement that suggests a perch, he runs towards the fountain to start a one cycle kill with beds. Each bed can do up to 63 damage, and the dragon has 200 health. However, an important skill of the one cycle is dealing enough knockback with each bed to prevent the dragon from landing. So with some well-balanced bed timing, dealing good damage and good knockback, he kills it in 5 beds. Looking over this run, it might seem perfect and unbeatable, with excellent mechanics and great RNG. However, this is never the case in speedrunning. While the nether enter time is nearly perfect, there have been nether enters with similar items that have entered around 10 seconds quicker. He had to travel for 30 seconds to get to the bastion, but the bastion split itself was nearly perfect. Just over one minute spent inside the bastion. 
Some Bastion routes can be up to 20 seconds faster than this. The fortress also seems incredibly close. However, it's possible for a fortress to generate even closer to the Bastion, possibly only one pearl away rather than two pearls. If you've watched some previous Minecraft world records, you'd notice that some fortress splits are spent without a blaze spawner entirely, and instead use random blaze spawns throughout the fortress. Those fortresses are typically incredibly quicker, possibly over a minute faster than the fortress split in this world record. What's also possible is the use of a looting sword found in a ruined portal. This can result in a fortress split as fast as 5 seconds, which would be a time save of a minute and 35 seconds. Zolanox measured his eyes very quickly, however it's possible for the calculator to give a good prediction on the stronghold and only one eye throw. The stronghold could have also been considerably closer, or as history has shown, it's possible to actually hit the stronghold in your first portal without measuring any eyes. This was even in a previous Minecraft world record, Grantilda's 938. Xylanox's end fight was also fairly quick. However, with a different pro strategy, Zero Cycle, with enough pearls, beds, and health, the end fight could have been up to 40 seconds faster. While the chance of all of these things going perfectly in a run is virtually impossible, it does set the best possible achievable time, technically to a sub 4, over 4 minutes faster than the current world record. Realistically, most experts expect the world record will drop to a mid to high 5, but we do think that this would take another few years or more. I hope the video was informative. Let me know what you think the fastest run we'll ever see is, and if you have any other video ideas that you want me to cover. Thanks for watching, and follow my Twitch in the description. I mostly speedrun Minecraft, but I've speedrun other games too, and generally play variety. Thanks again, see ya.